You see, I use cooking as a way to learn all kinds of things. I speak a bunch of languages because I, I picked them up as I sort of got involved in cooking. When I travel, I, I go, I don't go and sit in bars and, and make eyes at people. I go in the market and say to somebody, what's that? And even if they don't speak a word of it, they'll say, so I say, yeah. And then they finally say, come home. So you go home, and then you've got about three or four words of the language, you've got a new dish to cook, and the next day you can start, and that's the way to do it. And you learn all about climate, you learn about economics, you learn about people's habits, you learn about their religions, their politics, the whole lot. Once you eat with people, you've been really into I'd, I'd sooner eat with some. I, well, I got it wrong, I suppose. I would, I like to eat with people, but I won't eat with people I don't like. I'd sooner go to bed with someone I don't like than, than eat with them, because if you go to bed, you can just turn over and say, good night, I'm going to sleep, and that, that's it. But if you eat with them, you've got to talk to them. So it's a very intimate thing to do. How do you feel about cooking on talk shows? Oh, I don't mind cooking on talk shows. I mean, you cook on talk shows, the way to do it always is to create some sort of a theater. I, I used to do a talk show on CBC, and we used to cook. There was, uh, I forget what his name was. Um, the guy who does the, the Canadian, Don Harron, and one end of the, in Toronto with a fry pan and me on the other end. And we both have an onion and we both have a little bit of oil and we both have some garlic and we both have a couple other things. And I would tell him exactly what to do and we'd cook. And it was the first radio cooking show ever. And that was just great. But when you do TV, you have to do something outrageous for cooking. Like you set light to things. I mean, TV audience is like fireworks. And so you pour some booze in the pan. <laughs> Light to it, and there's the flames, and everybody's happy. And, and good nobody scales. ever eats it. I mean, most TV food is not eaten. It's uh, strictly a theater procedure. Don't you give tasters to the audience after you've had them well, smelling this creation? I kind of like? try to do that, but if it's one of these, if it's a really sort of terribly well organized show, they've only got about an eight minute slot or a three minute slot, and they don't care. You've done it, you've done it. It's like, you know, elephant. TV is TV. It comes and it goes, and it comes and it goes. Real cooking is a slow business of, of it's a thing of intimate relationships. You, you should cook with other people in the kitchen. You should have other people helping you. You should make them wait for it. Always make people wait for dinner. Never, ever, ever be waiting with the dinner. Walking up and down, they're late, they're late, they're late, because you get mad, the dinner gets spoiled, they get there, they don't like the dinner, they don't like you, everything is terrible. But if you wait till they get, they go up and down saying, boy, that smells good. Boy, I'm getting so hungry. And, and then they're going to eat anything. Now, what is the ideal kitchen? I guess you've had this one in yeah, your well, mind The ideal scratch. kitchen What's is that? enormous. Um, the ideal kitchen is big enough to have friends in so that you can cook and talk to them all at the same time. And if six friends want to cook at the same time, they can all come and help or get involved in their own things. That I, Farmhouse kitchens are the ideal thing. Grandma kitchens. Grandma cooking is the way to do it. The, the, everybody remembers their grandmother's cooking. You know, it, it smelt. Even if they never lived in the country, everybody likes to think they remember about grandma's kitchen. Mm -hmm.